Hello everyone, so I'm in a bit of a different location now because uh, when I recorded this video um, I was just on holidays for Easter but that doesn't stop me for having this passion for making another YouTube video and you know talking about an album that was released a few days ago and I was um, anticipating this release so apologies for the sound in the background you might hear some birds or some nature stuff etc I'm in a different environment right now so anyways Welcome to another album review and in this video I'm going to review Life Metal by Sun. Sun is without a doubt one of the most important bands when it comes to the whole genre of drone metal music. Their whole minimal but also heavy approach on drone music with the inclusion of just guitars or bass uh, make for some solid and really intriguing experiences which might have some weird and beautiful atmosphere but in the most of the time they offer us something really dark and dystopian and albums like Monoliths and Dimensions and The Black One have an important role in the metal community in general Now Life Metal over here is released 3 years after the release of Canon which was an album that people didn't talk about that much mostly because it was just another sort of typical album in the style of Sun it didn't provide something more unique to the table it was basically just a part of the same thing and it wasn't something that impressive for fans or for me either this album though over here seemed to be a bit more intriguing especially given that this album is recorded and mixed by Steve Albini who is definitely a really important name when it comes to parts of recording and mixing and in every single album he is put into he definitely leaves his mark and usually in a really good way also this album was extremely hyped up as being a release for Record Store Day at first. This album was released at first at Record Store Day, then it was released for pre-order and stuff, and then it was the initial release in April 26th. Life Metal still has the standards you might find on a Sun album. It has four songs and each one is really long in length, going for 11, 12, 19 and even 25 minutes on the last track. We're still talking about a long album, we're still talking about an album that has lots of lengthy drone segments. Steve Albini though really leaves his spot once again on this album because um, even though it has lots of things that are really reminiscent of what you will find on a Sun album, the whole way it is produced and the whole way it sounds, it definitely sounds a bit more like refreshing and like more alive despite being known for having a more aggressive side on mixing and recording especially given some albums like Surfer Rosa from Pixies and In Utero from Nirvana this album on the other hand sounds like one of the smoothest and one of the most gorgeous and most alive albums in the genre I think the whole presentation of the title Life Metal is actually apparent and it fits for this kind of album. This whole album has definitely a sound and an approach on sound that for the standards of Sun it's a bit different. It still has this dark atmosphere that you are used to from this really loud and dystopian sounds from the likes of Sun but there is that feel to it that something feels a bit different that something is not as you're used to there's just this glimpse of light on this whole dark atmosphere there is this glimpse of hope there is this something that um, gives you a bit of a more um, a refreshing and a more of a utopic feel in my ears this is the most vibrant, the most beautiful and the most euphoric album in 
probably the entire um, discography. Despite though being that alive and feeling like a kind of a different experience, um, I still think this album suffers from some of the stuff that you might get used to from uh, an album, like it doesn't go that much out of the ordinary. It still can get in par with some of the legendary releases, like I said, Black One and Monoliths and Dimensions. This album definitely offers a better first impression with the first track between Sleipnir's Breaths, which has a different aura, a, there is a bit of a different instrumentation, and I love the nice poetic approach from the vocals of Hildur, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce the rest of her name. Really gorgeous track that really gives a very nice first impression and I was definitely looking for something in the likes of the first track. Unfortunately the rest of the album goes for the more typical style of Sun without having that much of a variety in terms of a different instrumentation or even some ideas that would sound as captivating. There are some nice parts here and there, but the album apart from the first track and in some portions of the last one, Nove, the album still feels kind of flat, especially with the two tracks in the middle, Trouble There and Aurora, which are not something really that special. They have some nice elements of sound here and there, but it's the whole drone metal aesthetic that I've heard a lot of times from Sun and execute it better in some ways. There are still some nice and solid ideas and some nice parts and it definitely tries something different with its whole production and its whole way it sounds, giving a bit of a different feel for a Sun album. But still this whole flair, this whole energy misses in the last releases of Sun and it's kind of understandable, it's a sound that they've played lots of times before, they've done it better, but still for what it is, it's a nice Sun release, but not as one of their big releases in their discography. I'm going to give this album a 6 plus out of 10. What's your opinion on this album? Like it? Dislike it? Why? And what do you want me to review next time? Let me know down in the comments. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe for more content like this, thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.